What's up guys? In this session we're going to be executing a DOM-based cross-site scripting attack. We're going to be making use of this lab and the instructions are as follows. Perform a cross-site scripting attack that breaks out of the select element and calls the alert function. Now that doesn't mean too much to us at this stage but all will become clear when we have a look at the lab itself. Okay so we have a shop and we have different products in the shop and let's visit one of the products and see what kind of information is displayed. If we scroll down, we see that there is a stock checker. And if we have a look at the drop down box, we can see that we can select different stores and check the stock within those stores. Let's inspect this element and take a look at how it appears in the DOM. So we have a HTML select element and inside that select element are various options. Above that we can see some JavaScript. So let's take a look at what's happening here. First of all, we have a JavaScript array named stores and it contains three strings, the name of the shops. Then there's a new variable defined and this variable is actually going to look at the URL bar specifically after the query string, so the question mark, and it's going to look for a parameter with the key store ID. Now just taking a look at the current URL, we can see that there is a product ID parameter, but there's not currently any store ID parameter. So the first thing that we're going to try is actually just adding that store ID parameter. Before we do that, let's just see what we think is going to happen. So according to the JavaScript, it's then going to write the select element to the DOM, the one that we've just seen. And it's then going to start adding the various options elements that appear inside the overall select element. It says if store, so if there's a store ID param in the URL query string, it's then going to write that as an option inside the select element. It's then going to loop through the stores array and it's going to add an additional option element for each of the stores in the array, but it will check to make sure that it doesn't match with the store ID string, because if it does, it's just going to go over to the next iteration of the loop. So for example, if we were to set store ID equals London, well, it's not going to add London twice. Finally, it's going to write the end of the select element. We can see the close select tag there. So the next step is simply to add the store ID parameter to the URL query string. Now the way the syntax works here is if we use the and character, we can then define an additional parameter as part of that query string. So we're going to say and store ID equals, and let's just start off by inputting a unique search term and then ascertaining if and where that search term appears in the DOM and we already have a fairly good idea where it's going to appear based on that JavaScript. We're expecting it to appear as an option as part of that select element. So let's search for Zen Shell here. And let's scroll down. So now we see our store ID included in the list of stores, along with the original three stores that were part of that defined JavaScript array, London, Paris, and Milan. The next thing we can do is inspect and see where we're appearing in the DOM. So we have our select element. We have the four options now. The first being the one that we've injected via that store ID parameter. Now, just thinking back to the lab description, it mentioned that we had to break out of the select element. So that really gives us a pretty big clue what we're trying to do here as part of this DOM-based XSS attack. We can't do much from inside the select element. So if we break out of that, we can maybe include some kind of image tag in the DOM with perhaps an on error attribute that then calls an alert function. So back to our URL bar, let's think about how we construct that. So instead of just store ID equals Zen shell, Let's also include a close select tag. Now, one of the things we might be thinking at this stage is, hold on, aren't we inside an option tag? Don't we have to break out of that first? 
Well, technically, that might be the tidier way to do things. But as you will see, after we manipulate the DOM, that's going to be automatically corrected. The browser is going to recognize that there's a hanging option tag, and it's going to automatically include that in the newly rendered DOM. Either way, the key concept is we'll have successfully broken out of that select element, and we can now include something like an image tag. So let's include that now. Image, let's just give it a fake source, so it's going to error out. Then we can say on error equals, and here is when we put our JavaScript alert. And then let's just close our image tag. So let's submit that payload. Let's see what happens. And we can see we've carried out a successful DOM-based cross-site scripting attack. Well, let's do some post analysis. Let's check out the manipulated DOM. So we have select name equals store ID. We then have Zen shell. And you can see it's actually automatically closed that option tag for us. We don't really care about that. The thing we care about is that we've successfully broken out of this select tag and we've been able to render an image that's going to error out and process that JavaScript function. Notice after that, the options just continue as normal, but obviously they're no longer inside a select element. So it's essentially broken the page. It's not functioning how it's supposed to at the moment. Again, we don't really care too much about that. The main thing we care about is that we've broken out of that select element and we were able to execute some arbitrary JavaScript. So this was a successful DOM-based cross-site scripting attack. Well, that's pretty much it. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Hopefully this has improved your knowledge of how to execute DOM-based cross-site scripting attacks. Thanks very much for watching.